word of welcome to you if you are here with us for the first time. It's also a special word of welcome to those of you who are joining us online this morning. Um, everything you need will be on the screens for both here and online. And so uh, if there are words on the screen, we invite you to participate. And um, there we will have communion as a part of this morning's worship. And, um, and so, hey, uh, Craig, can you bump up the microphone on the altar just a little bit? It's all the way up. All right. Can you turn the gain up just slightly? There we go. Is that better? Check, check. There, better? Okay. Great. Want to make sure you can hear. Um, we will have communion as a part of this morning's worship. And so for those of you who are joining us online, we invite you to get some bread and grape juice or wine and have that handy. And um, because for here online and in person all, are welcome to come to the Lord's table this morning. If you are new around here and want to know more about this community we call Faith, I invite you, uh, you can either look on our website, faithgolden.org, um, or you can, if you have specific questions, you can um, email us at info at faithgolden.org. Or for those of you who are here in the um, worship space this morning, there are cards in the chairs in front of you. White ones are general information about faith. Yellow are if you have a specific question about kids or youth here at Faith. Um, it is a beautiful day to be able to worship together this morning. And so um, as we gather, I invite you to take a moment to simply um, close your eyes if that's helpful. Uh, breathe deeply. And we're going to pause for a moment of silence as we center our hearts and our minds in this time of worship. For those of you who are here in the worship space, I invite you to stand. God has promised that if we come and confess, he will forgive our sins. And so as we gather to worship God this morning, we remind ourselves that God pours blessings upon us, even when we choose to go our own way. God's mercy is here for us, um, even when we choose to ignore the way we are called to live. Therefore, 
Let us come before God together this morning to confess what separates us from God and one another. Will you please join me? We confess that we have fashioned idols of our own desires and worshiped the temples of our own traditions. We have denied your invitation to live our lives as you would wish. We have chosen worry over joy, distrust over trust. We have turned our backs on opportunities and we have failed to see the extraordinary each day in our lives. Forgive our short-sightedness, forgive our self-centeredness. God, in his infinite love and mercy, hears our confession and forgives our sin. By grace, God makes us new and calls us into a life amazing. May God's love for you strengthen you with power and compel you to love and let yourself be loved. In the name and power of God, the creator, redeemer, and spirit. Amen. I invite you to join us then in singing, Gather Us In. Technology is great when it all works the way it's supposed to. So just don't turn around because the people in the board, back in the board, are working furiously to get to, <laughs> to get to the right PowerPoint up. One of the great gifts we have to give is the gift of God's peace. And uh, that is a peace that is ours no matter what the circumstances of today brings. And so um, we're going to give you a chance to share that peace with one another this morning. 
whether you are here or um, online, we encourage you uh, to remember that the person who is receiving your gift of God's peace is the one who gets to decide how they receive it. So um, if you're a hugger and the person stands like this, good indication that they just want a, a wave or a fist bump or whatever. So just remember the person receiving peace. And then I encourage you to use this time as a, truly a time to share God's peace. Um, we have lots of time for chatting and checking in how are people you doing, but take time to look each other in the eye and gift the gift of God's peace this morning. And so um, if you are either here in the worship space or online, we also encourage you to take out your phones and um, to share God's peace with those who might not be physically near you today. And so I say to you this morning, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you please take a few moments and share God's peace with one another? Peace. Peace. <laughs> okay. It's really short scripture. I know. I noticed that. I was like, yeah, that so, works. Yes. So, um, yeah. And you noted it there. Yep. Okay. Boom. Yep. Boom. Okay. Exactly. And I can't even. No, I can't do that. Nope. It has to go side to side. In, in read mode, it has to go side to side. Gotcha. Okay. If you are a child of Sunday school age, Denise is in the back and she yeah. would love, or she's going to the back, she would <laughs> love to meet you back at the door. So if you're a child of Sunday school age, here's Miss Denise and you can head out to Sunday school with her. If you are of Sunday school age, Miss Denise is waiting for you back at the door. All the time. Just angry. All right. If everybody could please find your seat. Right. The first scripture comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ, who gives me strength. Second reading comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So we didn't give a chance for Sonia to introduce herself this morning. So um, I'll tell them a fun fact about you. <laughs> so Sonia is our youth director. And a fun fact about Sonia, if you have a dog and you ever need somebody to take care of it, call Sonia. I did for a random lady to see. <laughs> so... Sonia is a huge dog lover. I feel like I almost need to put a caution on today's message. A warning. Not easy, but life-changing. What do I mean by that? Well, these two texts that we're going to look at today, as we continue in our series Flip, and looking at how we can flip our attitudes about certain things in our life and then live more deeply into life that Jesus intended for us. 
Um, these two texts, one we misuse and the other we don't really like. So the warning for today still stands, not easy, but life changing. So first let's look at Philippians. Paul is talking to the Christians in Philippi. He's most likely writing from uh, being imprisoned or let me try that again. He's most likely writing while he is imprisoned in Rome. And um, the church at Philippi was one of the churches that was started by Paul. They longtime supporters of Paul, even when um, they couldn't financially support him, which they, they do, they prayed for him and Paul knew that. Paul is thanking them for their support of him. And in those days, prisoners had to have outside support if they were gonna be, get food to eat or clothes to wear and so give them the necessities. And so, um, so Paul is thanking for them for that. And then he goes into talking about how he views his life. And I just wanna reread a little bit of what Sonia just read for us. Paul says this, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Now those are, I think are interesting words coming from a man who has been shipwrecked many time, numerous times, has been imprisoned many times, he's been chased out of towns, had tried to been stoned, and he has been welcomed and taken in. He has been provided for, surrounded by folks who love him, had people join him on his travels, had, he has community, church communities that are thriving that he started. So when Paul says, I know how to be content with whatever I have, it is quite the statement. Paul has taken his life and learned from it, not just the good, but the bad as well. He has allowed life to teach him how to be content, no matter what. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty impressive thing to learn. And I wish I could say that I've learned that fully for myself, but I'm still working on it. I know it here, but I don't always feel it here. Just like you, I find myself longing for, I don't know, like the newest gadget or the things that I'm told I can't live without. I confess, I like to have new clothes and I love to travel when I want. But I also feel jealous sometimes when, when people get to go to places that I wish I could go to or to do things that I wish I could do. When someone has something that I want or a newer something than I have, um, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it because I know when I choose to be content, life is better. It's not plagued by jealousy. It's not, I, I don't find myself in this place of yearning, which leads to discontent. And I know when my heart is focused on all I already have, I am grateful. And gratitude is good, very good for our souls. Then there's this last line of what Paul says. And I don't want to forget it because this is the line we misuse. Paul says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So I apologize if I'm gonna burst your bubble here, but this verse in scripture is not a battle cry. It is not something to, to say, to spur us on, to win the game or to get the good grades or to accomplish that thing we wanna accomplish. It's not a hashtag on our accomplishments. It's not a slogan to help us get the good stuff in life. What Paul is saying here is this, whether today is your best day ever or your worst, God walking by your side, you can handle it. Whether you're in a place in life where you know the good things of life, or you find yourself in a place today where you are struggling just to get through each day, with God's presence with you, you can make it through the day. Whether you sit at a table of plenty, have a warm bed to sleep in and food on your table and in your cupboard, or you're sleeping in your car, not knowing where your next meal comes from, God is with you 
and you can make it through. This is what Paul is reminding us of. This, Paul reminds us, is if we are in a place of plenty, remember to be thankful. If we are in a place of want, remember to be thankful. This is not easy. Nor is it the way that we want to live most of the time. We want this to be all about God cheering us on, woohoo, to get the good stuff, to be successful, to make our goals. Sorry, it's not what the verse is about. It's Paul's call to us to be thankful, to walk through life knowing that I, that you, can, we can be content no matter what. Warning. It's called seeing our losses as gains. It's about seeing all parts of our lives and knowing that God is at work in the midst of it all. But we don't like to lose. And we don't like loss. And we don't like things not going our way. But this is what makes following Jesus beautiful and hard. Why some choose, a, I would say, a, a flavor of Christianity where Jesus is out to help them prosper, where Jesus is more worried about their earthly comforts than he is about their soul. But Jesus, as far as I'm concerned, is as clear as Paul is when he says these words that Sonia also read for us from the gospel today. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. You must give up your own way. How are you doing with that one? Yeah, me neither. I mean, let's be honest. What we'd really like is for our way to be God's way, but it doesn't work that way. Give up your own way. Take up your own cross. What does that mean? I mean, is it, is it that something terrible has to happen to us? I don't think so, though bad things can and will happen to us. But is it, is it about people like being mean or getting less than I think that I deserve? I don't really think so. So what if the cross we pick up is the path to following Jesus? Laying down our own way our own expectations of what we think we deserve, our own desires for comfort at all costs, our want to have things the way we want them. What if laying all of that down is what it means to pick up our cross? Picking up or rather stepping onto the path of following Jesus. Letting Jesus decide how we should live our lives. Letting Jesus be our example for what is important to us. Letting Jesus call us deeper into relationship with him, changing our own lives. Remember this, the cross, while we see it as a place of pain, is also a place of life. Loss that equals gain. What does it matter if we have the whole world, yet lose our soul? When I first started thinking about this flipping, this lost gain, I thought about things like this. Like, when I was a child, I moved multiple times. And each time I said goodbye to friends, and I had to say hello to a new home, to a new state, to a new school, all of that. And the loss was felt. But what I also gained from that is I gained the experience of starting in new places. I am not afraid to start over. I will admit I'm less inclined to want to do it the older I get, but I'm not afraid of it. I, I have been able to gain security knowing that God will always provide friendships for me, no matter where I am. And, um, and to gain a depth of love, that knowing that no matter what, my family is always there. Even when we're thousands of miles away physically, my family is always here. 
So I thought about that, and then I, then I thought about the season of my life when I, I worked with a couple of, um, let's say, we'll say less than stellar pastors. Um, yeah, that we, uh, yeah, there, that could be a whole sermon in itself. But um, one was mo- emotionally manipulative, one was emotionally abusive and lied. And it, and it was a time in my life where I lost place in a congregation that I deeply loved, a time that wounded deeply my heart and my soul. But in the midst of that lo- all that loss, I gained an understanding of how not to lead. I also gained t- a time to look at my own story and the own drivers in my own life. I gained the opportunity to get emotionally healthy myself to gain insights into wounded people, to gain the chance to come and lead here. Because I believe had I not lived through that, I wouldn't have been the right pastor for here. Certainly, those have been times of loss in my life. And only in hindsight have I been able to see that I have gained from all those experiences. And I have gained a lot. But what if the loss that Jesus is talking about, that Paul is talking about? What if the loss is the loss of needing things my way? Of laying down my way to gain the way of Jesus? That flips things in a whole different way. And it begs us, I think, to ask the question. Is it a loss we're willing to lean into? Is it a loss you and I are willing to lean into? A loss of our pride, our prejudices, our self-centeredness, our our want to just be comfortable, like I said, have just lived comfortable lives in order to gain what? In order to gain what? A life committed to Jesus first. A life that is defined by our relationship with Jesus. A life defined by our actively seeking to deepen that relationship. A life that reflects Jesus' light and love. A life that is filled with grace for you and for me and for all. When we lose our pride and our prejudice, our self-centered, our own ways, we gain a life filled with purpose and meaning for the sake of God's love here on earth. We gain a life knowing that it would be known, could be known for changing lives, including our own. A life that says those on the edges belong and are loved as much as I am. A life that calls us to love each other. A life that calls us to serve all. When we are willing to lose, we gain a life where being the hands, feet, and voice of Jesus is not an option, it is a privilege. A life filled with peace beyond the circumstances that we find ourselves today. We gain a life that impacts forever. We gain a life that lasts forever. Those are some pretty amazing gains. Yet, we give up on those. For the satisfaction of the moment, for the comfort of life on earth. And then we wonder where that joy of the Lord is when trouble comes our way. What is it if we gain the whole world but lose our soul? It's the bad flip of real life. And what I mean by that is it's flipping real life for what we count as real life, for better life. Where what we think is most important is actually what we have to be willing to lose in order to gain what we cannot lose. It is laying down what we think so important, being willing to lose the things of this earth in order to gain what we cannot lose, which is life with Jesus forever. It's a pretty big flip. And while I would love to stand up here and go, yeah, it's easy. Let's go for it. Yes. In truth, this is one of the hardest selling points of Christianity. Because who wants to lose 
in order to gain. We want to gain in order to gain. This flip is, in fact, the biggest, I think, flip of our lives. A flip we will flip-flop on. A flip we will have to make time and time again. Because the world around us tells us that this flip isn't worth it. That, in fact, it is a loss with no gain. But it is a loss with forever gain. The choice, my friends, is yours and mine. So the question I leave you with today is, will you, will I, choose to truly flip? Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, we come so often before you and we say we want to follow you. We say we want the life that you give. But in truth, we, we kind of want it as long as we can still have life as we want it here on earth. And Lord, today your call to the hardest flip of our life is pretty clear. If we are to have the life that you intend, we must be willing to lay down our own way. We must lay down our own desires, our own thoughts about what we think is, is right or what is right for us. We have to be willing to be uncomfortable, to try new things, to try new ways of doing things, to, to open our eyes to the world around us. This flip you call us to, though, Lord, is a flip that helps us shift into that mission we so loudly proclaim that we want to do, changing lives through your power so that we can be the hands, feet, and voice of you in the world. And Lord, I believe with all my heart this morning that we won't ever experience that fully until we are ready to lay down and lose the earthly things in order to gain the things of you. So Holy Spirit, work in our hearts today. Work in our hearts and our minds. Give us the desire and then give us the courage to make this flip in our life every time it needs to be made. That we might truly know the joy of life with you. I pray this in your name and in your power. Amen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good morning. We're having so much. <laughs> you might have noticed Jim's not here this morning, but um, I just wanted to, to say this next song is about, um, you know, in the presence uh, of God and really, really uh, always filling ourselves with him. And I think that's how we flip. And we talked about, you know, we have to get rid of these old ways, but we also have to dwell with him. And that um, is fortifying ourselves for that process. I think that's super important. So. Y'all can stand if you'd like. Thank you. How lovely is your dwelling place. O oh Lord Almighty, my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied within your presence. I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Now 
thousand bells wear. Better is one day in your court. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask and I would see to see your beauty. To find you in the place your glory dwells. One thing I ask and I would see to see your beauty. To find you in the place your glory dwells. Better is one thing Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere. My heart is cried out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water for my soul. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your court, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousand elsewhere. Our Lord knows the truth of that statement, and I think we do too, even though it's hard at times. But this is a table that we are now welcomed to that reminds us of the beauty and the glory and the grace and the forgiveness that is ours in the presence of our Lord. And so for those of you online, I invite you to get your bread and your wine or grape juice handy and then have one person in your home be the communion host and um, to hold the elements uh, for you in that place where you are, whether it's just you alone or you with other people. And then um, for us here in the sanctuary, I will hold the elements for us. But I invite you all then to join me in the words of this beautiful meal. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then for those of you online, I invite you to pick up your wine or grape juice and then join us in saying, after supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember and as we prepare to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. 
For those of you online with us, we invite you now to share the bread and the wine and grape juice with each other using words like, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If there is someone with you this morning that does not take communion, we encourage you to um, say some words of blessing to them. It can be as, as simple as, remember Jesus loves you and is with you always, or whatever words feel appropriate to you. For those of you here in the worship space, we will have two stations for communion here in the center. Ushers will help you get navigate to the center aisle. We'll come down the center aisle. You'll get a squirt of hand sanitizer, and then you'll come forward and receive the bread, and then um, step next and receive wine. Wine is and grape juice are in small glasses on the trays. The wine is darker and on the outside, the grape juice is lighter and on the inside. Um, we also have gluten-free wafers. If you need those, please just let us know, and we have those for you. And know this, all are truly welcome at this table. It does not matter what your church background is or if you don't have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus, if you desire his love in your life, we invite you to come to this table. And having said that then, oh, also our, this is our time when we gather our offering. And so there's a basket in the aisle here and we invite you just to drop um, whatever that off financial offering is today there as you come forward for communion. And with that, then my friends, come eat and drink and be fed with the bread of life.
Wow. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. For this day in which we get the chance to choose you again and again and again, knowing that you have already chosen us. Lord, help us to see the beauty of this day. Help us to see the beauty in the, the world around us, in mountains and trees and sky and snow. Help us also to see the beauty around us in faces, known and unknown. And help us see your beauty within us, our hearts and our souls. And Lord, I pray that you would give us opportunity this week opportunity to truly be your hands, feet, and voice in this world, that others might know the depth of your love for them. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those who are sick physically, mentally, emotionally. We pray your healing hand and your comforting hand would be with them all. Lord, we pray for our world in some ways so broken and in some ways filled with so much hope. We pray for our place in the midst of it all, that we would find meaning and purpose in our life with you, that we would find meaning and purpose in our serving of others, that we would find meaning and purpose of shining your light wherever we go. So, Lord, you know the needs of our hearts. You know those things we don't even know ourselves. And so as we pray to you, we also place ourselves in your hands, knowing that you hold us and walk with us. And for that, we thank and praise you. We pray this all in your name and power, Jesus. Amen. So a few announcements before we head on our way today. Many of you um, already know, but in case you don't, it is with sadness and with joy in the promise of the resurrection that um, we let you know that uh, faith member John Bartos passed away this past week. His funeral will be here tomorrow morning at 930. All are welcome to attend. Masks will be required. And, um, and then after the service uh, burial, John will have full military honor burial in Colorado Springs tomorrow afternoon. So um, know that you, the family welcomes you to come if you are able. Again, 9.30 tomorrow morning here at Faith. Uh, blood pressure checks. The Health Ministries team is doing blood pressure checks this morning. And so if you would like to have um, your blood pressure checked, just head to the office and, um, and they will meet you there and do that as well. And then Laura, right down here in her Sunday hat, uh, is, is selling um, fair trade coffee and chocolates and that. And so her table is tucked around the corner there. So uh, if you would like to need to stock up on co fair trade coffee or chocolates, um, stop by the table where Laura is at. And then um, family hosts, we are always looking for family hosts 
um, basically what you do as a family host is that you get to read the scripture for the day, you get to pray the prayer, you get to say the benediction. It's not hard. Um, we want families of all types and sizes and ages. Um, even if your littles can't read, um, they can still be a part of it. And, um, and so uh, we would love to um, have everyone have the chance to do that. And so uh, if you have done it and would love to, like to do it again, or if you haven't done it and would like to do it, um, you can let me know, or you can see on the screens there, you can contact Deb Barber. She's the one who coordinates the host, host families. And her information there, Deb at faithgolden.org or her phone number there. Um, would love to have, like I said, have every single one. It's not hard. And even if you mess up in your mind, it's okay. All right. We're not about perfection. We're about worshiping God. So, um, and then um, I have Parker. And I'm going to invite Parker to come forward. Parker is an Eagle Scout from um, Face Troop and uh, Troop 613. Right, I always want to say 631, 613. And um, you see there on the screens that Parker's Eagle Scout project was um, the beautiful sign that we now have as you come up um, the hill towards us. And uh, so first of all, um, before I let you say anything, Parker, I just want to say how proud we as a congregation are of you and being able to support the troop that supports you. And let's congratulate him. The Eagle Scout is a huge honor. All right, and then Parker has some words he'd like to share with you. Uh, I just wanted to thank um, the church for letting us use this space uh, for us to just gather uh, as a scout troop. Oh, sorry. There you go. My bad. Um, I just wanted to say once again um, that thank you guys for letting us use this church and this space for us to gather as a scout troop. It means the world to us. Um, and thank you for letting me do my project for you guys. It was a really... Uh, amazing time to be able to do it. Um, and one thing that's uh, amazing that we were able to do is when we were fundraising for my project, uh, we got money for the sign and even beyond that. Um, so I want to actually present a check to the church with the surplus money that we earned from the project. So uh, just so you all know, the same as I do, it's a check for $900. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, you can have it. So Parker is one of, of uh, actually our troop produces, or however you would say that, I don't know, but um, quite a few Eagle Scouts. And there are quite a few projects around here, probably many of you don't know, but like the stairs in the back parking lot up here that go up to the street, that's a, that's a double Eagle Scout project, an original Eagle Scout, and then it was redone by another Eagle Scout years after. Um, the fence around the garbage and recycling was redone as part of an Eagle Scout project. Like those are just recent ones. There's a box here in the the lobby as you go out those doors for um, for flags that have passed their life um, that you can place uh, flags in that box and then the troop will respectfully um, take care of those flags. So, um, and that's just a scratch of all of the projects that we have been blessed with by Eagle Scouts. So um, Parker, on behalf of the congregation, thank you very much for um, the young man that you are and for that sense of service that is clear in your heart. So thank you. Uh, one more announcement. Devin, I'm told you're making this announcement. All right. <laughs> All right. So Devin is one of our youth in our youth group, and he's got some information for you about the Youth Silent Auction next week. All right. Um, I'm Devin. Uh, next week, Friday the 13th, or not Friday, Sunday the 13th, um, right after church at 1045 they we will start a silent auction um in the fellowship hall if i'm not mistaken um it'll only last 30 minutes for bidding you can start bidding at 10:45. bidding will end at 11:15, so you don't want to miss that um i think that's everything oh it's <laughs> uh the money's going all to the colorado wildlife foundation foundation huh? 
Colorado Wildfire Foundation and to help with the wildfire victims from the Superior Fire and all the fires in And those items, Devin, they're, each item is being made by um, one of the youth, correct? Yes. So they are projects that the youth themselves have put together. And so in the fellowship hall next Sunday after worship, um, will, they, will the items be up before worship? Can we peruse what we want to, to see? No. Okay, no sneak peeks. Okay. No sneak peeks. You have to be here at 1045. All right. 1030. OK, that's all you get. 30 minutes. That's it. All right. Great. So bring your checkbooks and um, your wallets and, and come help our support who are working to help wildfire victims. All right. Virtual people. Yes, Sonia, do we have a way for virtual people to um, well, real people who are joining us virtually. <laughs> Um, to participate in this? Okay. All right. So here's an idea. If you are, you can write checks. <laughs> okay. So if you don't, I don't know if you heard that, but if you don't want to do an auction item, but you still want to support their cause of helping wildfire victims, checks and cash are always accepted. Um, for those of you who are online, you can do that uh, through, there's a, a, you can do it through online giving, um, which is found on our website, or call the church office or contact me, um, and we'll make sure that you get to be a part of this as well. I think that's it. I know that's it for uh, this morning. If you pick up our bulletin, which is the QR codes that are around here, there are more um, announcements in there and things happening. So I um, encourage you to please do that or on our website or with the link for worship um, because there are announcements always in there that don't make it um, spoken out loud uh, on Sunday mornings. Uh, so with that, though, I invite you to stand and to receive God's blessing for this morning. So now as we go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.